Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to do another tutorial on geometry nodes. We're gonna be doing how to do kind of this kind of animation. In order to get this, we're gonna make sure we're having a curve. We're gonna be instancing points along the curve and we're gonna be changing the location of those points randomly using the factor. First, click on the cube, go to GeoNodes, make a new system. Let's call this um, curve point noise curve line. That's going to be where we're basing the effect on. Zooming in a little bit. And then now what we want to do is do essentially the instancing the points in the line so we can see kind of how we're going to move them around. So we're going to do a uh, resample curve, get 10 points, instance on points, and let's just use an icosphere so we can illustrate the effect. Nice. Is that zero? Maybe 0.05. Okay. So we're seeing these 10 points along the curve, and now we want to be able to move them kind of all over the case like that way. So in order to do that, we're going to be using a sample curve node. This is what's going to drive the effect. So a sample curve node takes the curve data and essentially along that curve data with the factor from zero to one, you can then choose whatever you want. Uh, this is going to be a way of kind of getting the points to move kind of randomly. We're going to take this position and there's a set position before it even goes into the instancing. We don't want to increase subdivision. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically take a random value node here. Actually, let's just show this before we even move it. Put the position into the position and we move the factor along and it goes up and down the curve. I think we saw this in one of my other tutorials, but let's just look at this. Did it delete the other points or what's happening? So let's kind of check this in the, in the back. So if we do uh, translate instances and we add some noise right here, we pop it in, we do a vector math and we offset by 0.5. That keeps it centered. Minus 0.5, there we go. And then we're gonna scale this by the index so you can see everything. There we go. So it looks like the point is kind of dancing around like one point. But with the, if we you know, have it multiplied by the index, we can see it's actually all 10 points are moving around in different areas. So it's just setting all of the points of that curve to the same spot on the factor. So then if we were to add a random value here, we then kind of get this scattering effect. Um, and so then but the best way to kind of make it look move around is we add a math and then we do a, a fraction. So it will stay between a zero and one. And then we add another math node right here. We say add. If you go really small, you can see actually my bad back here. Delete that guy. Go into this guy. You can see it moving up and down. And then the center point's not moving because that's the index of zero. So if we take out this, it will then look like all of the points are kind of moving around and kind of repeating the same flow. And obviously you can change the seed here and that will change how the points are being distributed. So what it's doing is it's setting all of the points, all 10 points, along the factor at a random value across different positions. And that's how it's able to do that. To make it look good for an animation, let's just do this really quick. Let's add in 180 for frames. I like to do 60. Let's say 60. I mean, it's three seconds, starts at zero. Let's delete the keyframe I pulled at zero. It's scene time. It gives us a frame value, put the frame value in there. Float, curve. I guess we actually can remove the fraction if we do this. No, we can keep it, it's fine. And then we'll put the float curve here, a divide. So we need a math node here. We have 180 frames. We're putting in here. So now it's going from one to zero for 180. And this is going to be the interpolation of it. So this is a linear interpolation. You don't need the fraction now because it's going to loop over 180. Play, it should be working, but it's not because this is add, we need divide. And there we go. It's moving and we can change this to change how the animation works. Keep it linear to make it easy. It's looping. And if we want to change the speed of everything after this, what we can do, change this. So we would add this make this a multiply or something. And that's why we want to keep the fraction. So this is two, this is twice the speed. This is half the speed. So we have the points moving, which is good. We have a bit of noise. And now the last thing I wanted to do is make sure we can get some scaling on the tops and the bottoms. So how can we do that to make sure it looks good? Right here, we're messing up the factor. So we can't use the spline parameter factor to make it work. I'll just show it so you guys, so you know it doesn't work. So if you do spline parameter, Plug in the factor here. Yes, it does scale them, but it's not scaling at the tops and bottoms. So things are kind of disappearing. So I want to make sure we can get them to look like they're appearing out of nowhere. So up here, we can go here. We can do the same kind of thing. Instance on points. Take an icosphere. We're going to plug this guy in here. Plug this guy in here. Now on the endpoints of the curve, we now have these two little guys. So what we can do is realize this geometry. And now we have real face data and we can say uh, then geometry proximity. 
So now we have a geometry proximity of this face data and the sample position down here after it's moved to the point. So we say capture attribute position and we plug that in here. Now we should have the distance function here. So plug the distance into this scale should be nice and clean. And it looks like it's working. It's getting nice and small. Maybe increase this radius to 0.1. Now let's watch. Good. They're coming kind of out of nothing. The distance on this actual point is zero, obviously, so it's scaled to zero. And then as it gets further away, it scales up and it scales back down. So that's looking like how we want it to look. 0.5 is maybe too big. So this is kind of the main effect. So we have it kind of just moving through. It looks a little gloopy, a little blobby. I like it. We want to increase the, the noise after the fact, this same noise function, I'm going to remove the index stuff. It's no longer needed. I'm going to do scale. We can increase the scale. So now it's more kind of crazy flying around. But also too, we can increase the scale here. So I would make this scale probably pretty low. Maybe increase this one out so it gets a bit further out. And now we kind of have these points moving around. You could add more noise, rotate instances. Yeah, let's just do a random value. And let's add a vector. Actually, we can keep it as a float minus pi to pi, plug that guy in, change the seed. We want to have it move around over time, so we need to have that same float curve over here. This is the same animation driver. We can then multiply it in. Vector math. And then we're going to do a multiply. Pull this in. And it should have it be moving around over time. Hope you guys found this interesting and please leave a comment below. It really helps the algorithm. It means a lot, guys. Thanks so much. See you next time. Augury.